Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. I hope you're having an amazing day. It is Thursday, June 12th, 2014. And this is the facts of the matter. Are you showering or soaking? Sam is a high-geared executive with a multinational corporation who is routinely engaged in analyze, analysis, problem solving, and decision making. Recently, I sat down with Sam and asked him to share his observation from a passage of scripture. In seconds, he grasped the essence of the section, and in crisp fashion, spewed his assessment back at me. His analysis was correct, but it seemed cold, lacking in heart. What's next? came his inquiry. Came his inquiry. <coughs> K-N-O-W-I-N-G, God, is what I felt like answering. Sam knows the Bible. But does he know God? Like Sam, most of us approach the scriptures with all the depth of taking a shower. That is, we splash under the water, rub on some soap, rinse off, and are out of there. Kind of sounds like Douglas. He's a quick couple minute shower. I like to let the water run on me, you know, just stay under there for a couple minutes. <laughs> By way of contrast, soaking in a bathtub is considerably slower and more deliberate. You choose to lie there, relax, and allow the hot water and bath oil to penetrate the skin, to open your pores, you soak in the water. And it takes time. You're just sitting there relaxed, just soaking it in. When you finally do step out of your tub, your body is soft and mellow. Sam needs to learn to soak in the scriptures, not just Sam. A lot of us need to learn to soak in the scriptures. For example, in Matthew chapter 18, verses 3 and 4, And said, Verily I say unto you, Except ye be converted, and become as little children, ye shall not enter in this, into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. If we were soaking on this passage, if Sam was soaking on this passage, his thoughts might run something like this. He would picture Jesus' gentle and relaxed manner with children. As they climbed up on his lap. Perhaps he would realize how he tends to dismiss little children and their world as irrelevant. As Sam pondered the scene, his mind might flash back to the sophisticated and self-assured people in his business world. Then he would visualize the innocent and unaffected children gathered around Jesus. Doubtless, he would be struck by the contrast between his world and theirs. <clears throat> Almost without realizing it, he could find himself praying. God, forgive me for being so unlike Christ. 
I need to exhibit Jesus' quality of gentleness with children by being gentle with the people in my office. I need to take more unrushed time with my own children. In the crush of corporate life, <clears throat> in the crush of corporate life, I have lost much of my childlike innocence. Father, forgive me for my stiffness and my air of self-importance. That is soaking in the scriptures. So my question is, are you showering or soaking when it comes to the scriptures? Last night in church, the, the topic was, or the, you know, it was um, the love liar about how so many Christians claim they love everybody. And it hit home quite a bit. You know, there was quite a bit that hit home in this house. Not just with me, but in the whole house. Um, but I can see this is also hitting home because as of lately being rushed with this house and everything and getting everything done, I've been a little more sterner with Joey and, you know, I've shown him that I love him, but I've been more strict with him lately and It reminds me that I also have to slow down and take the time with him, not just be strict with him. I need to be gentle with him, too. <laughs> that phrase, the children are a future, popped into my head. And if we don't take time to not just show them how to res how to act responsibly, but also with love, kindness, gentleness, meekness, long suffering, they're not going to be the Christian children we want them to be, or the Christian adults that they. I don't want to say should be, but if we don't show them that now, it, it'll be too late later. We have to show not just sternness and strictness to our kids or our family members. This ain't just children. You know, it said people in the office, but we have to learn to show more compassion, more understanding. We can't just, be, just because they don't want to heed our advice or listen to us, doesn't mean that we can just throw them away and move on. We're supposed to show them the kindness, the love, the support that Christ shows us every day. We all need to look in the mirror and ask if, if people see the Christ in us or if they see the world in us. And if they can't see the Christ in us, how much Christ is really in us? We have to be more innocent like children. And they love on, without hesitation. They love unconditional. That's what I was trying to think of. They love unconditional without hesitation, without any fear.
and we need to be like that. We need to love, have compassion, have caring, have understanding as little children. Have that innocence back again. That nobody is wrong. That nobody is bad. And that we are to love everybody. Even if you feel they did you wrong. Because in essence, they didn't do you wrong. They did the Christ in you wrong. They did Christ wrong. Not you. Remember, Jesus said, they will hate you because they hated me first. In these days, we can see the love of man has waxing so cold. And it's up to us as Christians to not let that affect us. We still have to love like Christ, have compassion like Christ, have understanding like Christ. And even have long suffering like Christ. He said, he was asked, if my brother offends me seven times, how many times do I keep forgiving him? And Jesus said, not just seven times, but seventy times, seventy times. You know, you don't just not forgive them. You have to forgive them. You have to love them. The Christ in you makes you do it. And if you can't love the, your brother, then you don't love Christ. And your brothers are your fellow Christians. Not just your family members, but your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you can't love them, then you can't love Christ. Do you shower in the scriptures or do you soak in the scriptures? And that is the facts of the matter. For Thursday, June 12th, 2014, peace be in you, my brothers and sisters. May the Lord have mercy on us all. I love you guys very much. God bless.